Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me, Rian Nair, taking your class today, and today we're going to talk about the transportation chapter. And this is the chapter five of the class in ICSE biology syllabus. So let's not waste more time and let's begin. Okay, guys. So first we'll talk about the radio syllabus. I've already made a video for the radio syllabus for the biology and history and all the sciences for uh, you guys. So please go watch that before watching this video because you'll understand the radio syllabus before watching this video. So in the syllabus we have transportation and process and significance of the uh, of transportation. Then we have the Ganon sportometer and its limitations, the factors affecting the rate of transpiration, experiments on transpiration, a brief idea of gradation and bleeding, concept of transpiration and its importance to plants, then experiments related to transpiration, then uh, these two are very important ways, which is the loss in weight of powder or leafy shoot in test tube as a result of transpiration. Then we'll do experiment related to the cobalt chloride paper. Okay, and we have the adaptations in plants to reduce transpiration and a brief idea of cutation and bleeding. Yeah. So in this session we're gonna talk about transpiration and the measurements of transpiration. It's gonna be very very fun guys, so don't worry about that. Okay. So yep. First we'll talk about what is transpiration. So in the learning objective we saw that we have to talk about what is transpiration first, right? So we'll see what is transpiration first. So transpiration is basically the process of loss of water in the form of water vapor from the leaves and the other aerial parts of the plant. Okay. So what is transpiration? It is basically the loss of water from the aerial parts of the plant. Okay. And so 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 this process of loss of water through the aerial parts of the plant is known as transpiration. Okay. So that is transpiration and transpiration is very very important for the plant because only a small quantity of water about two percent of the water is used by the plant right out of hundred percent only two percent of the water is used for the plant during photosynthesis which is the next chapter so please wait okay then rest all the water is lost to the atmosphere during transpiration so 98 percent of water is water is lost okay during transpiration 90 percent of water is lost during transpiration okay so this is what transpiration is now we have to measure transpiration okay so 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 basically when so let's say we have a leaf okay let's say we have a leaf and the leaf goes and uh, goes through transpiration okay let's say this leaf goes through transpiration now we have to measure how much transpiration has happened, right? We have to measure how much transpiration has happened in it. So for that, we will use the methods. We have few methods for measure, uh, measuring them. One is the weighing method and other is the potometer method. So first let's talk about the weighing method. The weighing method is very very simple guys. It's like, like this is very basic. This is this is not in the syllabus but like just for your uh, basic information. I'm just telling you this, okay? So the weighing method is very very easy. Take a beaker and uh, add some water into it, okay? Then take a plant and place it in the beaker and add a layer of oil into it to prevent any loss of water through evaporation. Then measure the plant before and after a certain period of time. So basically what they're saying is here, uh, let's take this uh, this diagram here. So guys, you would have uh, uh, be like pretty familiar with this uh, diagram because we've seen the same diagram in the absorption by roots uh, chapter. Okay, so there we have used to assist, uh, like to see that absorption of uh, roots happens through the uh, roots itself. Okay, and that's why we put uh, like a layer of oil to prevent any evaporation. Okay, so basically even uh, even evaporation is a type of uh, like like loss of water, no? So to prevent evaporation, we put oil there. Okay, and we add the plant here, and see you. Uh, and you see this there is some water in the test tube. Now what is happening here is, uh, you will know that the root absorbs water okay now after the like the uh, root absorbs water where will the plant go as i told you uh, like a bit of water is used for photosynthesis by the plant but rest all is lost through transpiration is lost through transpiration right so now we can measure it how can we measure it now first well, so so let's let's let just like make a setup like this. So we'll take a be a, a beaker. And we'll put a plant. We'll put oil in the first layer. Then put some water, and we'll wait. Okay, 
let's say we wait at 6:30 okay let's say we wait at 6:30 pm let's say we wait at 6:30 pm now let's say we leave it for approximately 2 hours okay so we leave it for 2 hours now after 2 hours at basically at 8:30 8:30 pm you will see that there's a loss of water through the roots because the roots have absorbed some water now the water will be in the plant itself right so it won't go anywhere but what has happened here is that the water is not there it has been uh, evaporated to the aerial parts of the leaves okay and that is known as transpiration now let's say uh, when you measured it like like at 6:30 pm it was um, say 1 kg right let's say the plant was 1 kg now when you measure it at 8:30 pm it would have been at 800 grams 800 grams and guys so what has happened here there's a loss of water due to the loss of water you can see there's a 200 gram uh loss right you can see. so so you can't just like measure water in grams right so we'll take in ml or whatever you want right so that's one of the methods which is the weighing method now we'll talk about the photometer method so there are several photometers guys there we have the darwin's uh photometer we have the farmer's photometer okay we have many photometers but for transpiration itself we have a particular uh, photometer which is known as the ganong's photometer okay so we we'll talk about the ganong's photometer this whole session now so the experiment name is ganong's photometer and the aim of this uh, experiment is to measure the water taken in by plants because of transpiration with the help of ganong's photometer and the materials required for this is very simple we have we need the ganong's photometer a twig of plant a knife water beaker and a coloring agent okay so we need uh, how many uh, six materials right now now the what is the procedure we'll take the twig and uh, so the twig is uh, taken then it is cut with a sharp knife and fitted at one end of the capillary tube okay so i'll draw the uh, procedure just don't worry just li just listen to me now i'll draw the procedure and explain to you don't worry about that then it is graduated capillary tube is filled with water okay and one end of the tube is made up uh, is made to dip in a beaker containing colored water okay then an air bubble is introduced in the horizontal capillary tube an air bubble is introduced in the horizontal capillary tube then keep the setup undisturbed for 5 minutes this is very very important this is when it change happens now i'll show you how the photometer looks as you see this is the photometer this is this is how the photometer looks so what do we have here we have a uh, like a beaker containing colored water then we have a air bubble then we have the so we have we are like we have to open uh, we have to take out this uh, capillary tube so this is the capillary tube okay so this tube which you see here it is known as the capillary tube we take out this capillary tube and let just let a small air bubble get into it so this is the air bubble here okay now we have the capillary tube here and we have the scale to measure how much transpiration has occurred then we have the reservoir uh, and the stop cock okay so what is the reservoir do so uh, like usually what do you uh, get know by when you say a reservoir a reservoir basically stores water right like extra water it stores extra water so we'll so I'll, i'll tell you like the uh, use of the reservoir in what then we have this uh, uh this uh, capillary tube and in that we have the the twig okay we have the twig it is a living twig see it is a leafy shoot so we have the shoot in it and we have placed the shoot in the uh, capillary tube okay now after some time what do you think would happen here after some time what do you think would have happened here it is the observation so this is like so usually uh, they give this in your practical record for uh, 20 marks right so usually they give it for your practical records it is like different for different schools few schools just give for this photometer as a drawing for the uh, practicals so yeah so in the observation what we will see that this air bubble here i'll just uh, like take out everything so that will be more easier to explain so as you see this air bubble here this air bubble will be moving why why will be moving because this shoot the shoot will will take in water and lose water through transpiration 
will lose water through transpiration okay guys this uh, photometer is very 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 important guys because this is uh, like this might be asked for several marks so please make a note of this this is very very important so this will lose water through transpiration okay so the leaf will uh, lose water through transpiration now as this water is lost this air bubble will be moving to and fro to and fro now now let's say some water is lost okay now this uh this air bubble was here now this air bubble will move here okay let's say this air bubble will move here okay now the air bubble is here now to re-see the experiment to see the experiment again what you do is you open the reservoir the reservoir here and you let some water in so that the air bubble moves back to this point right so that's the work of the reservoir and, and like how do you open the reservoir using the stop cock so if you see so if you open the stop cock the, the, the air bubble will move back again because why why will it move back again because more water is added right so as i told you before only uh, that the reservoir stores extra water and why is there oil here why is there oil here usually they use oil to prevent uh, loss of water through evaporation okay so, so that's why we have the oil here now as the air bubble is back again yeah so now the air bubble was here uh, after this transpiration now after five minutes after five minutes we open the reservoir and we get the air bubble back now if you leave it for another five minutes again transpiration will occur and we'll see the air bubble so the movement of air bubble like the to and fro the air bubble will give us the measurement of the uh, like the amount of transpiration happening okay so let's say we have uh, uh, two centimeters so so let's say this bubble is at two centimeters now after trans after five minutes this bubble moved four centimeters further okay now to get it back to two centimeters what do we do we open the stop cock to let more uh, water and so like we we open the stop cock to let the reservoir put more water into the capillary that's all this experiment is so easy guys this is all and now we'll talk about few precautions and limitations in the use of this photometer there are very very important precautions and limitations in this use of photometer so let's discuss about them yes this is very very important now in the syllabus as you go back to the syllabus yes so in the syllabus if you see guys we learned we saw that the um where is that yes so in the ganong's photometer we need only its limitations okay and not its precautions the precautions is removed i guess okay but still we don't want to take any risk so we'll just learn that as well okay so just learn one point from that so that will be easier for us okay so we learn the precautions first and the limitations first so the limitations are 100 percent there it is very very important guys so please learn this the precautions might not be there but just still learn one point more okay the portometer so the precautions are the, the first precaution is that the portometer should be made completely watertight the portometer should be made completely watertight okay so this is what is it so so this is the first uh, precaution it has to be made watertight so that they like they know uh, like there's no extra water coming into it okay so it has to be it has to be made watertight then the twig should be cut obliquely obliquely in sense so let's say this is the twig it has to cut in a way in in an oblique way like this this is the oblique way okay this is the oblique way of the uh, cut twig okay so yeah and uh, uh, to allow larger surface area to water intake and under water to avoid suction of an air bubble in the twig which will stop the absorption of water into the cell okay so it's very very important to cut the twig obliquely next the limitations in the use of photometer introducing the air bubble is not very easy it is very very difficult to introduce the air bubble see you have to introduce only one air bubble if you introduce two then the whole experiment is spoiled so if you introduce only one air bubble then it's very very hard to as, 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 as i told you you have to like lift this capillary tube a bit and let one air bubble go through it and come in so it's very very uh, difficult few times okay so that's one uh, limitation the twig may not remain fully alive for a long time right so the twig will have a very less uh, uh, like lifetime because we remove the roots of it right we have, we have removed the roots so hence it will be very less for the uh, plant to live okay 
and any changes in the outside temperature may affect the position of the air bubble in the capillary tube so you have to uh, make sure that the temperature remains the same during this experiment if there is any change in the outside temperature it may affect the position of the air bubble it might like uh, just go back or go front uh, so it, it might affect the position of the air bubble so yeah guys i think we're done with the session so let's just uh, have a quick recap of this how the whole session what we have learned in this whole session so let's see how much you guys got right so if you have if you have if you have paid attention to me this uh, recap will be very very easy i'm gonna ask you two simple questions and one question is a board question remember that this might be asked the board for sure and the other one is just a random question from the session okay so let's see so this is the board question so guys please pay attention to this this is the board question i'll just mark this for you guys so that'll be easier for you okay that's the board question now yeah. transpiration is best defined as what is it defined as the loss of water by plants is it defined as the evaporation of water from aerial part uh, aerial surface of plants or is it defined as the loss of water as water vapor by a plant or is it defined as the release of water by a plant into the atmosphere what is it best defined as so guys the tricky question so this is a, like this is one of the tricky questions here because all the four options here can be the answer for this question but they're asking the best defined option which is the best defined for transpiration i will give you 10 seconds so please make sure you answer it uh if you let me just look like look back to the definition to get the answer here for this and your time is it is evaporation of water from aerial plants of the surface yes of course it can be the loss of water by plant that is transpiration for sure it can be the loss of water as water vapor by a plant yes it can be that for sure that can be release of water by a plant into the atmosphere also right anything can be but the actual definition the point on definition here is the evaporation of water from aerial surfaces of plants so this is the perfect answer okay guys so yeah if you go look at the definition once you'll understand this question very properly okay so no worries don't worry guys now this question is a random question it's a very very easy question if you have paid attention to the session properly this will be a very very easy session very easy question so let's see how many period it right which potometer is this so, so which kind of a potometer is this as i told you there are many types of potometer which potometer is this is it the farmer potometer or is it the darwin's potometer is it the ganong's potometer or is it the or it is or it's not a potometer right so if, if you see the options you can just take out one potometer for sure oh sorry you can take out one answer for sure so let's see i'll give you 10 seconds okay. and time is up it is the ganong's potometer so I think Ganong's potometer, right? We have spoken about this in detail. I told you how this works also. It's the Ganong's photometer. Yes, my handwriting is a bit messed up this class because like I'm using a very bad uh, slate. I'm very sorry for this. But yeah, I, I hope you understand. Okay guys. Now yep, we are in the end of the session. Thank you for watching the video guys. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Please like the video if you felt this video was productive. Please share the video if you felt that your friends could benefit from the video. And subscribe to the channel to motivate me to make such beautiful videos. And if you have any doubts, or then please mail me at dianmayesh.edicare at gmail.com. Or just put down in the comment below. I will answer for sure. Okay? So no worries, guys. Yep. Thanks for your attention. And bye. See you in the next video. And of course, this is the part one. The part two will be out soon. Okay? So yeah, bye guys.